to introduce you to um, the Corsair Brand Touring. So just a couple of housekeeping items I'd like to cover off at first. Um, embargoes. All photos and material on the Corsair Grand Touring is embargoed until 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, November 20th, or 9.01 p.m. Um, Pacific Time on the 19th. So please, no photos, no sharing of the Corsair Grand Touring information ahead of the embargo time. If you have any questions or clarifications about that, please talk to myself or Anna Penn, we can answer those questions. Um, hashtag is hashtag Lincoln Corsair. And then also you will be receiving an email from Annika, which will include all of the press materials, the fact sheets, um, B-roll footage, as well as the press release. So once you receive that, if you have any questions, please let us know. We also have a great number of Lincoln team members that are here with us today um, joining us. We have Kamal Kurek, who is Lincoln's um, chief designer. We have Michael Sprague, who is our North American director of marketing. We have um, Trevor and Gretchen who are in the room from the marketing team and we also have Patrick Smith who is our chief engineer for Corsair. So great program planned for you today so with that I would now like to introduce Joy Filatico. Thank you. Thank you Anthony. Good afternoon everybody. You know it's hard to believe it was just about a year ago that we were here in LA revealing the aviator and it's really been an exciting year uh, for Lincoln as we continued our accelerated pace of product introductions and also sales growth. With the launch of Aviator, followed by Corsair, and now we're really excited to show you the Corsair Grand Touring today, and we'll talk a little bit about that more in a moment. So we continue on our journey of transforming the brand, a transformation that's led by both products and services. You will recall it began with the introduction in, with Continental in 2016, then we followed up with the all-new Navigator, then we had the Lincoln Nautilus, and then of course Aviator, and then most recently Corsair. And today, our SUV lineup is the strongest that Lincoln has ever had. Our newest vehicles are gaining traction in the marketplace, and our momentum continues to build. Through October, our sales were up 7%, representing our best year-to-date performance in over a decade. Our SUVs continue to drive this momentum, and we marked our best ever October ever with a 15% increase year to date, led by Navigator, Nautilus, and Aviator. Navigator alone, sales were up 25%, and Aviator contributed nicely to the October performance as well. And just like Navigator, we continue to see Aviator clients opting for our higher series mix of reserve and black label. And it's early, but on Corsair, we're also seeing a higher mix of the reserve. At the same time our products are gaining traction, the Lincoln Way continues to define how we approach our service offerings. Warm, human, and personally crafted, and above all, effortless experiences is the promise that we deliver to our clients. As this includes services like our pickup and delivery, and we were the first ones to bring complimentary pickup delivery to the market. And to date, we've done over 250,000 rides. In October, we did 19,000 alone, 19,000 rides. We also, a couple months ago, just launched Lincoln Access Rewards. And this recognizes our clients' loyalty and provides them with exclusive experiences courtesy of some of our hospitality partners. Now these rewards are designed to make life more effortless by giving back what is most valuable to our clients, their time. Our dealer partners are also playing a pivotal role in our transformation by building new brand exclusive facilities that enables them to provide a luxury experience with personalized touches that our clients expect. So these are just a few of the proof points of how we're executing on our strategy with an unwavering focus on our brand and our clients. We are staying on course by obsessing about every detail that enhances our client experience. And we're doing this in our experiences, but also in our product DNA 
that we call quiet flight. Now, quiet flight represents the brand essence of our and our design vision that you see come to life in our products. Our designers and our engineers work together to ensure that it's delivered throughout our product portfolio. Our elegant designs are meant to seduce. The drive is uniquely Lincoln, and you feel like you're gliding on the road. And the human pillar ensures we design intuitive technologies into the vehicle. And my favorite, the sanctuary, is an area where we spend an inordinate amount of time transforming our interior spaces to be a place of sanctuary and serenity. Designed to revitalize not only the driver, but also the passenger. And Aviator Corsair are our latest executions that really embody this brand DNA. And now I'm excited to talk about how we're looking forward and building on our commitment to electrification. As many of you have seen and felt, Aviator Grand Touring, our approach is quite unique. Electrification is a different kind of performance for Lincoln. One that is effortless and delivers that feeling of gliding. As Matthew would say, it's not amped up or overtuned. The addition of Corsair Grand Touring offers yet another compelling choice for our clients in this highly competitive segment. Ladies and gentlemen, the all new Corsair Grand Touring. Corsair Grand Touring continues our momentum, providing a second plug-in hybrid offering to our clients. It elevates our standard for small luxury SUVs, and it builds on that commitment to electrification. It features the spirit blue badging that we first introduced in the Aviator Grand Touring. And to share more about what's under that hood, welcome Patrick Smith, our Chief Engineer. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> it is my pleasure to be with you all here today as we continue to build on the Corsair lineup. The Corsair Grand Touring features a 2.5-year Atkinson cycle, four-cylinder gas engine with advanced hybrid technology to deliver effortless acceleration. Lincoln First Electric All-Wheel Drive provides um, smooth ride, utilizing, um, oh. <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> Lincoln, Lincoln First Electric All-Wheel Drive provides a smooth driving experience that is first to the segment. This step-up offering features power split electric continuously variable transmission with two motors working together to deliver a smooth driving experience. The electric all-wheel drive provides power to the rear wheels with situations where power to all four wheels is required. The combined output is targeted at 266 horsepower and an all-electric EPA estimated driving range of greater than 25 miles. The Corsair Grand Touring battery features lithium ion chemistry designed to provide consistent output over a long period. Advanced underbody packaging enables all the benefits of an electrified powertrain while maximizing legroom and luggage space. As with the Aviator Grand Touring, Corsair Grand Touring uses an intuitive system to make the charging um, effortless. Using a light ring around the charging port, customers at a glance can identify the current state of their charge. Corsair Grand Touring it's capable of level one and level two charging, and clients using a 240 volt electric, a level two charging cord can achieve a full charge in three to four hours. As with Corsair, Lincoln drive modes enable the driver to further enhance their driving experience. Standard modes include normal, excite, conserve, slippery, and deep conditions. Two additional drive modes have been configured and tuned for the Corsair Grand Touring. Preserve EV saves and recharges the battery while still allowing the motor and the engine to provide the performance the client expects. While driving in this mode, the battery will recharge up to 75%. Pure EV keeps the vehicle in all electric mode 
in most situations. However, should demand exceed the electric capability, the hybrid engine seamlessly engages to provide the needed demand. And of course, the Corsair Van Touring comes with all the technologies and the amenities our customers have come to love in the Aviator and the Corsair. These include Link and Embrace, Copilot 360 Plus, Rebel Audio, 24-way perfect position seats, and a serene whisper quiet sanctuary. I am really excited to announce the all new Grand Touring joining the LinkedIn lineup. With that, thank you, Joy. Back to you. Thank you very much. So the Corsair will certainly play an extremely important part uh, in our lineup, and as we expect that it will introduce younger customers to the brand, as well as female clients. And now that with the addition of the Grand Touring, we're opening up the aperture and providing yet another compelling and uniquely Lincoln vehicle for our clients. Now, the Corsair client is an interesting one. It's one who adds even more depth to the Lincoln luxury demographic. This client truly appreciates elevated experiences and views them as really opportunities to enrich and define one of themselves. Passions and culture are inextricably linked in their day to day, from local travel to music and to art. So we've gathered an expert panel to take a deeper look at the experience of music and the role that it plays in culture today. It's my pleasure to welcome Katie Bain from Billboard to lead our conversation on music as an experience. So Katie, please come join us. Thank you. Katie Bain, I direct electronic music coverage at Billboard magazine. Um, a lot of people know the genre is EDM. It includes everything from massive festivals to up and coming artists to trends in the scene. And really what we do is talk about the intersection of music and culture and why music is so deeply meaningful for audiences around the world, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about here. And so we have some really great panelists joining us today. Uh, first up is Michael Sprague, the North American Director of Lincoln Motor Company. We have Jamie Weston, the EVP of Universal Music Group, and we have Chris Ludwig, the VP of Epic Experience. Epic stands for Early Pursuits of Innovative Concepts at Apple. Thank you for joining us, guys. Great to be here. Great to be here. All right, so we're talking about music as experience and how music has evolved over the years due to technologies and platforms, making it more accessible for consumers to discover, and how it continues to shape culture and how brands connect their audiences. And so it's been a long, it's long been a vehicle to connect brands from all categories with younger audiences, and in this case, millennials. Um, so the first question is, at some point, the radio and live music and then MTV changed how people heard new music and artists. There was, of course, always word of mouth. But it seems like in the last 20 years, there's music discovery everywhere, from Starbucks to any number of platforms. And so what do you guys think are the most monumental changes to how we consume music? Absolutely, Kate. Thanks, first of all, for having us. I um, really appreciate the opportunity. Um, I think over time, it's been very interesting how music has evolved, particularly in terms of media, but also in terms of how we experience music and environments. Um, from a media perspective, it's evolved from you know, the days of AM radio to FM, CD, XM radio, the digital domain, and then ultimately to streaming services. Uh, music has really become kind of a, an on-demand feature where we can access any artist we want to at the click of a button. Similarly, in parallel, environments have played a huge role in our experiences in music as well. Whether that's from headphones with Bluetooth devices or portable Bluetooth devices, um, and even in the vehicle. Um, it's really transformed to allow us to experience really any kind of music anywhere we want to in any environment we have. The vehicle in particular is a really interesting environment because today it represents a third of our listening experience um, that's been done in, in our everyday lives. So as you can imagine, the vehicle is really transforming from really a, a mobility platform to really an experiential platform, and allowing us to really make that jump between having a living room in your house to really a, a living room in your car, filled with all of the experiences and entertainment experiences that you would come to expect. That's fascinating. Thank you for your insights. David, 
Amy, do you want yeah? Sure. Well, I'll step out of the auto industry for a minute, uh, working for Universal Music Group, and just talk about the industry and what's changed over the years. And we've all experienced it because we all listen to music. Uh, we've really switched from a, a transaction uh, business to a consumption business. What do I mean by that? Uh, Back in the day, uh, you bought, you owned something. You bought a CD, you bought an album, or even a digital download. Um, and you had that sense of ownership. And what's changed, obviously, is we now lease the, the, the right to listen to music. So we spend our money with the platform. Um, and so where we didn't, it didn't matter if you listened to an album or a song one time, we now want you to listen to it all the time. So we're always, just trying to immerse consumers around artists as brands and get them to listen more, more than once, the importance of that. Now, in this new world, there's pros and cons, right? So if you're no longer owning the music physically yourself, you're less likely to listen the whole way through. I can remember when I'd buy an album and you listen from, from beginning to end and it was yours and you had that pride and that, that ownership. And today, with this, the next generation, it's, it's a little fleeting, right? So you'll dabble in this, you'll move on to that, and you're not always listening the whole way through like you used to. Um, a stat that I love, uh, the, does anybody know the attention span of a goldfish? <laughs> it's nine seconds. What is the attention span of Generation Z? Three. Eight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> less than a goldfish. But that's important to know, right? When you think about how you're listening to music. Um, and the, the, on the other side of that, that's what's discover, discovery is opened up. When you bought something, it was your money coming out of your wallet. You're less inclined to make a purchase if you didn't know the music. Today, you'll listen to anything. So genres are broken down. You have fans of, of country and hip hop. There's no more genre borders, so it's that discovery that we're talking about here is, is, is really true. That's really interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. Is there anything you want to add to that? Sure. Uh, I'll take us back to the automotive <laughs> space and what we're here to talk about. And also, I appreciate the fact that you remember albums because I remember <laughs> yeah. listening to my albums as well as a kid. Uh, but at, uh, at LinkedIn, as Joy has mentioned, we're all about creating a sanctuary like uh, environment for our uh, consumers. And so our engineers spend a lot of time trying to figure out what's the best way to experience music. And so we partner with brands like Rebel, who are, are awesome at helping us understand you know, the types of materials that we use, like uh, acoustic laminated glass, and even the types of leathers or, or other types of things in the vehicle that absorb the sound, and the placement of the speakers and things along those, uh, those lines, so that our customers have that great experience with it in the vehicle listening to music. Uh, we're most excited about how far uh, the digital connectivity has taken us and where that's going to take us in the future, particularly with 5G coming. But also our engineers don't look at it just in terms of the audio system. They look for other little things that kind of highlight the craftsmanship that LinkedIn focuses on, like those annoying uh, alerts that we get every time we open the door or we take our seatbelt off. So we partnered with Detroit Symphony Orchestra to come up with a nice tranquil chime that alerts you to an issue with the vehicle. And so what better way is you're there listening and experiencing our, our vehicles to have the chime go off versus that annoying beep, 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 beep. So uh, those are the types of things that we're doing to create that sanctuary like experience. Those are such and elegant touches. Yeah. Maybe. Amazing. All right, so we all know that music is really powerful. I'm sure everyone here has a very profound memory of music-related. Um, you know, I've covered festivals around the world, and I've always been struck by how music unites people and helps people find their communities, and of course, helps us all to find own, our own lives. And so, what do you guys think are the most impactful ways for companies to connect with audiences musically? Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, I think what, all too often brands think of music at the end of, of the stage, like as the marketing layer. And when they incorporate music into the strategy of the brand, of the product level, in, in the, the brand strategy, you start to unlock more authenticity, whether it's with music, whether it's creating a, a mnemonic sound for your brand or a 
connecting with certain artists, um, creating new music experience around the brand. So I've seen that in my time um, at Universal, and we, we've done a tremendous amount of work with brands globally where they're getting into I, I, defining the music strategy to unlock, unlock that authenticity. And I think that's where it's worked so nicely um, with Lincoln and the Corsair, where we have the ability to, to really tap into and reach that millennial audience. I call them the millennial unicorn. Because they're stuck between uh, the, the Gen X and, and above them who are very brand loyal. Um, so they grew up in a brand loyal world, but also they're in this new digital world where they're open to trying new things, trying new experiences. So they're, they're really in, in, in the two worlds where I call it the unicorn. Um, I, I really am excited about the Chart Your Course campaign that we're doing with you guys because it's really giving, the, in a way, the power to that millennial consumer um, who wants to engage. And I know you're going to talk about it more, but um, I think it, it's, it's been a really nice way to bring the two, two together. Yeah, okay, absolutely. So in, in terms of launching the Corsair, um, we are targeting a millennial customer. And we're fortunate or unfortunate, I guess, is there's not a lot of awareness for the LinkedIn brand or for the Corsair. Uh, we understand that uh, millennial customers don't necessarily want traditional broadcast and print. They're looking for other ways to experience the brand. So we're taking a digital first approach. Uh, very excited in partnering with, with Rebel and Universal Music Group. Uh, where we are going out and looking to discover kind of a, a person who is on their, on their path to really rise up within the music field, but are, really haven't achieved the level that uh, they think they can achieve and that we think they can achieve. So we've uh, developed a campaign called Charge Your Course, and we opened it uh, about a month ago. We partnered with Matthew McConaughey because he's such a great ambassador for the brand, and also John Batiste, who's one of the most innovative and creative uh, musicians in the space today. So the idea is for uh, up-and-coming artists to come up with a, an original form of music, or uh, original song, uh, then create a video and post it to our site. Because we know millennials, they love content creation, they love storytelling. And so our objective was that we would get about 500 submissions, and we got over 1,600 submissions. So we've been working with the team here to call it down, uh, and we've narrowed it down to four finalists that we're going to reveal here shortly. These four finalists, we're then going to chart their course. We're going to work with Capitol Records and other music producers at Rebel and Universal Music Group to help take them to that next level in the hopes that maybe we discover that next John Batiste. So I think we've got a video here. Yeah, it's going to be a show. We all know someone who has more talent than they realize, but just needs a little push or the right connections. Hey, maybe it's even you. It could be the roommate who sings in the shower or even the street performer with an original song. With the help of Lincoln and the all new Corsair, we're gonna help that talent chart that course with the world's best producers and a recording session at the world famous Capitol Studios. The journey starts here. So submit your original song to chartyourcourse.com and you could be the part of an extraordinary musical journey. Why do you think music is such a connecting point for brands? 
But if you think what a brand is, I mean, a brand is all about creating that emotional connection with the consumer. Uh, and we know millennials are passionate about music, and we're trying to kind of create that intersection between the two. As I mentioned, we had 1,600 people who wanted to participate in this. It, it blew us away. And the stories behind each one of those submissions were absolutely amazing. People, the journey that people are on to become kind of the next big things is pretty incredible. So we think the content that comes out of this and that storytelling and that emotional connection that people will have with, with the, uh, the finalists here and then the, uh, us as the Lincoln brand and the Corsair will, will be amazing. Just so the audience understands what happens next is uh, over the next two months, we're going to uh, work on some content with these people and then they're all going to be featured in a uh, 30 second spot that's going to air in the Grammys. And then consumers will then help us pick the finalists or pick the winner. So uh, as soon as the uh, yeah, to run of the Grammys will be open up our, our website, and people can pick the, pick the winner. So I think it's going to be really cool, really engaging. That's fantastic. It's really exciting. Do you want to add? Yeah, I, I would just say that why there's the strength in brands connecting around music. And I think, you know, 91% is statistic is 91% of the US population say they are music lovers. I'm still trying to find that 9%. <laughs> um, but that's, that's a large number that's very powerful. Um, contrast that to sports, it is about, I think, 54% of the US pop says they're, they're uh, sports fans. So the opportunity, uh, I would say, is, is, is there. And even in this day and age, in, in the fragmented digital landscape we live in, uh, which is creating that modern loneliness, people are still coming around music. It's connecting people. It's bringing them together. I often say it's that last great American campfire right? that, that draws you in. And not much else does that today. Um, so again, for a, that's very powerful for a brand uh, to consider in, into their strategy. And then you go on to discovery, you talk about, uh, there's roughly 75 million uh, millennials out there. 62% of them say they're actively seeking out experiences from other brands. So it, it's there. It's just about making that right, authentic connection with them and, and, and be real, I think, is, is the importance of it all. Yeah, Absolutely, and I just love you know the, the Lincoln Rebel experience is so powerful because it, it really is all about that, that emotional connection. Um, and, and I think Rebel as a brand is really, its sole emphasis is really trying to, to get you as close to that performance as possible. And that's all passion, that's all about emotion and, and allowing those stories, hopefully, that we're gonna hear as a result of this campaign really, really come through. Um, because at the end of the day, it's really about having that music touch you in uh, really emotional ways. And I think the, you know, really the, the partnership that we have with Lincoln and really all of the wonderful acoustical technologies that we bring from the Rebel side combined with you know, your fantastic lineup really do combine to offer that true sanctuary of sound. Um, and it's that, that environment in which you can go to and relax and disconnect or be energized in, in whatever mood you're, you're interested in um, to really provide you, you know, the most wonderful experience possible, bringing those end consumers as close to that musical experience um, to really touch their everyday lives. Thank you, thank you. Um, so what do you guys think the future looks like, either from a technology standpoint, in terms of how platforms are actually evolving, or in terms of reaching people with music? What do you, what do you foresee happening? I mean, from, from a technology perspective, the, the future is super bright. Um, you know, I, I think Michael alluded to you know, 5G, we've got big data coming on board. Um, it, it's all about really, the, from an audio perspective, the, the palette for engineers to create is expanding. I mean, no longer do we have a, a very small footprint of a DSP to do things on. Now, once we start getting into cloud computing and, and big data and 5G, really offers us at, a, at an engineering level the ability to do things that we've never done before. Um, creating, for example, like um, bringing the acoustics of a famous concert hall into your car, really transforming that vehicle space into something bigger um, than it is currently <laughs> today. Or bringing the sounds of nature in, you know, letting us truly be a sanctuary of sound and bringing, making it feel like the consumers are inside of a forest or, or, or um, next to a waterfall or at a beach. I mean, 
And it's really evolving sound as a tool for us to really create unique experiences and then leveraging you know, a lot of modern day technology in order for us to do that. That's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah, for, for us, if, if you look back at history, as, as we talked about earlier, the first radio was put in a vehicle in 1930, and then about every 15, 20 years, there was new innovation, so FM and A track and cassettes and so on and so forth. So if you think where connectivity came in about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and now we've got 5G, it's the timing is just incredible because it's about 15 years where 5G is really going to enable us to do some amazing things in the vehicle. So that's what we're excited about in the long term. The near term, of course, we're excited about the Charter Course campaign and everything that it's going to do for the Lincoln. joining us here today. Um, we also on Wednesday, uh, we hope that you can all join us on the Lincoln Stand at the LA Auto Show. Um, we will be hosting a reception beginning at 3.40 p.m. Um, in the afternoon. So look forward to seeing as many of you as can make it there as well. Um, as I mentioned earlier, embargo timing um, for all photos, anything shared on social with photos of the car, with car information is at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time on the 20th. And our team will be here for the rest of the afternoon. Um, feel free to come take a closer look at the vehicles and um, speak with them. Thanks again.